one hand and the clicker and somehow it'll work and it'll be fantastic. Hello, thank you for being patient. Um, I've actually been watching Video Brains talks on YouTube for a long, long, long time and it's very weird being on the stage looking out the other way instead of being inside that little camera there. Um, so thank you for having me down. I'm going to talk tonight about my daughter. So if you have had enough of child photos for the night, this won't be the talk for you. Uh, you may notice the ridiculous pun in the title. Uh, the re rejected puns include what to expect when you're expecting a gamer, the Halo trilogy and a little lady, and honey, I blew up the kid's Minecraft house. All in the bin. They're not going to be the title for the talk tonight. So this is the little girl in question. This is Rosie. Uh, Rosie or Rosie Roo or Rooster or Rosie Rubles, Oodles Noodles or Rubles in the Bronx. <laughs> if, you f if you follow me on Twitter, then uh, I often call her kiddo and I talk about what we've been doing today. She's six now. Uh, and I'm going to talk about how I introduced her to games and how we play games together and what games she likes and what games she doesn't like. The idea being that I wanted her... Well, if I'm entirely honest, I wanted someone to play games with, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but also, I want her to be... Whatever she does in her life, I want her to be enthusiastic and excited about something. I want her to be a geek about something. It could be a geek about games, because that's what I'm a geek about. It could be a geek about bird watching. I don't care, as long as she has something in her life that she's absolutely enthusiastic about and will happily talk in front of a crowd of strangers for 25 minutes about uh, but let's get to know her a bit better. So this is her. She's incredibly vivacious. She's a bundle of energy. She won't stop talking. Uh, sometimes she explodes with happiness. It's hilarious. She can come in a room and she will be shaking with joy about something that she wants to tell me. Uh, she has beautiful half-moon eyes. I don't know where she gets them. They're gorgeous. She's incredibly creative. At this point, I'd run out of things to point at with an arrow. <laughs> so creativity comes from my shoulder, apparently. Uh, before, as soon as she was old enough to hold like craft scissors, she was cutting up pieces of paper and sticking them together. She loves doing that. She has an adorable chin. It sticks out just a little bit from her cheeks. She's young. In fact, she's sickeningly young. She's been young the whole time I've known her while I am just getting increasingly old. <laughs> she, she's scrappy. She loves a good tickle fight. And she's huggy. She'll burst into a room, give you a cuddle for no reason, and then leave again. And sometimes you're working and you just want her to leave again. But then also she's giving you an amazing cuddle. Uh, and a disclaimer before we start, I tried to look up if the government had any guidelines on how much video games kids should play. Because we're going to be talking about very young kids playing video games. And it turns out they don't tend to have a limit on that. They say you should have one hour physical play a day. That's fine. Uh, they say you should limit screen time before bed. That's good advice for anyone if you want to have a good night's sleep. And they say that there was a study on an NHS blog talking about how children, there was a study correlating two hours of screen time with increased blood pressure, but not necessarily linking them as a, one as causing the other. Um, so that's a thing. I don't know. It's a third bullet point, so that's good. Uh, so we're going to start at 18 months. If any of you uh, have children or younger sisters or brothers or younger cousins, you may know how a child grows up and like what developmental stages they go through. I had no idea. I don't have any younger brothers, younger brothers or sisters. I don't have any younger cousins. She was basically the first small person that I saw grow up in close quarters. So if you don't know, then young children will start to walk and talk their first words at around 12 months of age. At around 18 months of age, which is this age, their motor skills are getting good enough that they can pick up two things and bash them together. Um, they're getting some kind of decent, simple language going. They're understanding sim very simple cause and effect. And in terms of motor skills, they can probably put on their own coat, but maybe not do it up. And this is the stage where we're at where we can basically, this is, this is like the first stage where we can say, okay, you can now play video games. And, and so that's what I did. <laughs> uh, and the first time she encountered video games was a time, every, every parent will recon recognize this, but also not talk about it a lot. Is it, as adorable and amazing and as much as you love them, there are times, especially with very young children, we just want them to shut up. And for us, for me and my partner, um, I'm not ashamed to admit that time comes at six o'clock in the morning on a Saturday. 
when she's awake and she just wants, she's an only child, she wants attention, she wants people to play with her. And so at 18 months old, that became the point where we brought it into our bed and we would give her one of our phones with a game on it and she could play that game and give us another 45 minutes of sleep in bed. Uh, and the games that she really got into, and like the games that I found after having explored in the app store for a little bit, that were really good were the games from a company called Toka Boca. So this is the, one of the one of the. There's some fans in. <laughs> this is probably the very first video game she ever played. This is called Toka Band, and in this game, you simply uh, these are characters all representing different instruments. You drag them with your finger onto different spotlights on the stage and they start playing their instrument and they're all playing in time. So it's basically like a very simple musical sequencer. And it's noisy and you're not gonna make anything frightfully original with it, but it's a really, really fun thing to play with. Thryn was talking earlier about the separation of, um, of, of play and game and we're gonna get more into that later and this is definitely way on the play side. Uh, another one she really liked was Toka Store, which is a game where Two people play, and basically you put things out for sale, someone offers to buy things, they pay you money, you give them a receipt, and that's basically all it is. Uh, Toka Hair Salon is the most amazing bit of mobile technology I've ever seen. It's got the best hair physics. No, it doesn't matter what happened in Tomb Raider, right? Forget that. <laughs> this is good hair physics. You can grow this stuff, you can curl it, you can straighten it, you can cut it, you can grow it again, you can dye it, you can put hats on them. And Rosie would just go nuts for this for a long, like for hours and hours and hours if we let her. We don't, you know, we don't let her play for hours and hours. Uh, and you can then take your creation into the photo studio and take a photo of them. And so I'll get my phone back and the camera roll will be full of, of, of hawk culture or creations like this. Uh, and then they also get quite creative, these Tokoboka games. Then, I mean, they're mechanically interesting as well as being very good uh, toys in a way. This is Toka Builders, which is basically Minecraft creative mode, but rather than just letting you plock blocks down, they give you these six characters, which you can swap between at any time. And they all have different ways of controlling. This one you control like a mouse, like a trackerball on a, on a desktop computer. This one, I think you use tank controls to control it. And then they all do different things. So this one paints. And this one drops stuff out of the back, drops blocks out of the back. So you have to think of what you want to build and then interpret it in terms of these six things and how you are going to use them to make what you want to make. Incredibly collaborative game as well. It's lots of fun for you two to try and figure out the puzzle of how you're going to build something here. Uh, and then she's gone on through her life. We're going to do roughly in year order, but to skip ahead a bit, she still plays mobile games. Uh, Monument Valley was her big obsession for about six months. Because, I mean, it's, it's very hard to find yourself in a fail state in this game. It's very hard to not be able to solve the puzzle from wherever you are. And she was really enjoyed the tactility, the tactility, the tactileness, <laughs> whatever, that, yeah, that word, <laughs> of manipulating the environment and moving her character around. And we recently both started playing Lara Croft Go together. And she's still at the stage where she wants me to help, help her do that. Um, but Momoni Valley, she could play the whole thing from start to finish by, almost by herself entirely which is quite impressive for a four-year-old. Uh, so skipping ahead, 18 months to two years old. So two years old, we are, if I can tell my notes, uh, doing recognizable drawings now. So she can bring me something and say, hey, look, I've drawn you. And I can be like, oh, yeah, you're right. There's a face there. <laughs> <laughs> she can do poppers and zippers. Uh, she can use those craft scissors I was talking about now. And so I thought, OK, great. She loves mobile games. This is fantastic. We're on a roll. Time to crack out the console, and we'll be playing Super Mario Galaxy together before the end of the year. And so I got out a couple of what I thought at the time were kids' games. I got Super Mario Bros. Wii and Lego Star Wars. I thought these are very well-known, very well-made kid games. They're going to be good. Uh, Super Mario Bros. Wii lasted about 40 minutes because at her age, even though she can manipulate craft scissors, the idea of holding down a button and then timing a jump, so holding down run, and then timing a jump button to land on a Cooper's head is just way too much. And as soon as she died, in, 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 if you play Super Mario Bros. Wii, you go into a little bubble and you start floating around the screen. You have to shake your thing. The other person has to come and get you. It's relatively stressful. Lego Star Wars lasted a lot longer because if you die, you just respawn. And even when she wasn't really, really, really able to control it very well, uh, there were relatively few platforming elements. So you can kind of split the controls and you can use the analog stick and walk up to someone. Okay, stop using the analog stick. And now you can hit the bash button until they're dead. 
and then you can stop using the bash button, and now you can start walking again, so you can kind of split these things up. There's relatively few actual platforming bits. Uh, and even when she was getting confused, and she'd be walking into a wall or something, and she, I don't, I'm not even sure if she really noticed that she was doing that, because the, the screen is so full of mayhem and excitement and lights and Lego bits running around it. She just had fun looking at the screen. So that lasted a while. But still, we weren't at the stage where she was coming to me and saying, hey, daddy, can we play some computer games on the console? You know, it was always, if I, if I said, do you want to play Lego Star Wars? She said, yes, but it was never the other way around. So what was I doing wrong? So I went and looked at some different models of play, and I was really worried when I pitched this talk that someone was going to do a talk about models of play and, and come up with some really well-resourced, uh, well-defined thing. I just pulled some stuff off Google, right? So this is, just, this is merely illustrative of the types of play that toddlers and infants might use. One of them is called... Uh, is called expressive play. So this is kind of noisy, messy finger painting, using a trumpet, using a, a drum. It's not about making something. It's not about saying, hey, look, here's the picture I drew. It's about this controlled chaos of creating something. Uh, the second type is manipulative play, and that's about taking a gadget or a puzzle or a toy and exploring the limits of it, of sliding these things around to see how fast they can go. Do they start tipping? When do they start tipping? Is it around there? And, and just exploring this, the, the physical limits of what this thing can do. And then the final big one is dramatic play or role play. Uh, that's one that we've seen all children do. All the children of Rosie's age that I know, boys and girls alike, love playing mummies and daddies from a certain age. Uh, and obviously it's the first thing they really understand as a social construct is this relationship between a parent and a, and a child, and they love replicating that. And when I went and looked at those Toka Boca games, it's surprising how well they mapped onto these concepts. So Toka Store is obviously dramatic play, you're representing shopkeeping. Uh, hair Salon, you're taking this amazing hair physics and you're trying to shape and mold it into something that you wanted to make, explore the limits of it. So it's kind of manipulative play. And then Toka Bound is just this wonderful chaos of just jamming everything you can, can onto, into the, uh, onto the stage in whatever shape and making a, a beautiful noise. And the one thing all these models of infant and child play don't have are rules. Kids, just like at her age, it's something I didn't understand, didn't grasp. They're just not interested in a game telling them how to play. They don't want it to say, you did that badly, you're dead now. They don't want to start again from the beginning. They just want to keep exploring and making their own boundaries and then pushing past those boundaries. And so that's what I was going wrong when I was bringing her into Mario and into Lego. Both games with very strict rules about how is the, what is the right way to play these games. Uh, so I thought, okay, let's try again with console gaming. How can, what games are there on consoles that have very few boundaries, very few rules? And the, the one, one, I could come up with was uh, actually a double fine game, probably the double fine game that the least people have played in this room, which is called um, Connect Party or Happy Action Theatre, which is a Connect game. And yes, the Connect was rubbish, but as good as it could ever be, this was it. It was wonderful at putting the um, your living room on the stage, and it would do amazing things like fill it with lava and set fire to your furniture. It put stupid things on your heads. It could even do stuff like rub you out of the screen completely and replace you with a skeleton. And it did all these in like WarioWare style vignettes that last about two minutes each and then another one comes in. And so they never get bored. And she went absolutely nuts for it. Absolutely loved it. And this was the point where she started coming to me and saying, hey, can I play on the console? Can I play that Kinect game? Can I play that jumping game, she calls it. And whenever kids came to the house who'd never played it before, she was like, daddy, daddy, we've got to show them the jumping Kinect game. Uh, and she still plays it even now. This was her at the weekend she asked to play it. And she was playing it very happily, jumping around, bashing down these buildings as a Godzilla-type monster. So, brilliant, good. We're, we're off to a, a rolling start now. She's on consoles. We just have to keep edging her along. So we get to four years old. Uh, at this stage in her life, she's relatively sophisticated in terms of ideas, language, motor skills... She can now bring you a drawing and you can understand what it is. Oh, look, that's a house with people in it. Uh, and she um, is able to articulate that stuff through drawing without having to talk to you about it. 
And at roughly this point in my life, I was playing a lot of Animal Crossing. I say at this point in my life, I'm always playing a lot of Animal Crossing. <laughs> uh, if you've never played it, probably everyone in the room is familiar with it. It's a slice of life game where you're in this town and uh, you have so many options for what you can do at any one time. You can go play different mini games to, uh, you can plant gardens, you can dig up fossils, you can decorate your house, or you can pay off your mortgage, all the fun things. Uh, and so I was playing it a lot, and she would see it, and she would ask to play it, and I would be, yeah, of course you can play it. And she, we started with her sitting on my lap, and of course, it's again, it's one of those games, it has rules, like you can't have a bigger house until you pay off your mortgage, but it's, there's no fail state in it, you can never go into receivership and get your house taken off you. Uh, the, the, you know, it, it's, you could turn up every day and play the game how you want to play, and there's so many options for how you play it. So we started with her playing on my lap, she graduated to playing by herself. She got used to the controls enough that she could walk around with the analog stick and dig. dig accurately digging turns out to be really hard for a young child because you have to stand in exactly the right tile on the floor and dig in the right direction. Um, just the mechanical, something you take for granted, like in Animal Crossing, changing the way you're facing by just flicking the D-pad or flicking the analog stick to change the way you're facing is a skill that a, ch a child new to this kind of stuff does not understand. If you ask her to change the way she's facing, she just she ends up turning and then moving like three screens. So she took a while to get used to that, but she got used to it. Uh, I got a, her own house in my village, so she was able to come and play uh, whenever she want. She got her own 2DS two Christmases ago. That was a very exciting time for me, my daughter's first games console. And so she could play whenever she wanted. It was great for long car journeys. But there was an aspect of the game I was worried about introducing her to, and that was the money side of the game. She loved going to shops and buying stuff, and I was afraid if she reached the stage where she could go to the shops and couldn't afford something, then she would just stop playing. And I didn't want that to happen. I didn't want her to, be, uh, to have that experience yet. And so I did what's either the most dad thing I've ever done, or the most spoiled brat thing she's ever experienced, which is after she went to bed, I would boot up her account and I would like grind the game so <laughs> she would have money and I would pay her for mortgage and make sure there was loads of money in her account so when she woke up in the morning, she could have a big space in the house to fill with whatever she wanted to buy. Um, and it worked, it worked. She kept playing the game for a long time. Uh, this Christmas, just gone, she got her own cart. So now she has her own town. This is, the, this is her on Christmas Day, creating her town. Uh, and at this point, I had a decision to make. I could either continue sugar daddying her after she'd gone to bed, or I could cut her off and be like, okay, now you have to understand real life. And this game requires money, and you have to go and earn money in various ways. And that's what I did. I, I mean, I, I gave her a lump sum because I'm not a monster. <laughs> but after this, kiddo, you're dry. Uh, and to my delight, she she super excited about the money side of the game, about the idea of choosing different fruits to sell, about going to the desert island to catch bugs, which are worth more money than staying on land. Uh, she, at one point, because because my town, when she was playing, when she started playing, had already filled up the museum, so we ordered all the fossils. She never experienced that part of the game, and she got to experience it when she got her own cart, starting digging up fossils and building her collection. And after a week or two of doing that, I said to her, you know, those fossils, once we identify them, they're worth like 10,000 bells, and I, which is a lot of money in Animal Crossing. A lot of money for one thing, anyway. And I was interested to see if she was going to pursue the artistic endeavor of like filling the museum, or if she was more interested in kind of like shirking this stuff off for as much money as she get. And she chose the latter option. And every single fossil she dug up went straight to Reese's to sell for money. Uh, you can also, in Animal Crossing, once you have two carts, you can play multiplayer, which is something we'd never been able to do, which was, it was so, uh, it was such an amazing experience to play in the world with her. And one time we were both running around having fun. I think we were hitting each other with spades or something. And she said to me, Daddy, go hide in the corner. You can't watch I'm gonna, what, what I'm going to do. You can't watch. And I was like, oh, okay, but I'm going to indulge it, so I'll go do it. But I was like, she's making a pitfall seed hole trap for me or something. And after a while, she was like, okay, I'm done. I'm leaving. Bye. And I was like, what? What? Okay. And then 
the next day I turned the game on, my mailbox was blinking and there was a letter in there and it said, 210, that was my name in the game, thank you for everything you have done, love Rosie. <laughs> and we, we talk about like the holy grail of games that make you cry. That. <laughs> so, yes. At the same, so, four years old, five years old, I was also playing at the time uh, Zelda Link Between Worlds, which is amazing. And she sat on my lap at one point and said, I haven't seen that Animal Crossing level. What are you doing? And I was like, what are you talking about? It's a different game. And, and then I looked at it again, and it does kind of look, it's a similar camera angle, it's a similar color palette, similar controls. And I was like, oh, well, maybe we can do some Zelda together. And we started uh, with her sitting on my lap again. Um, she tried fighting the monsters, but as soon as she got into, again, it's like one of those fail states. As soon as she, as soon as she died and got sent back to her house, she was like, that's not, that's not really for me yet. So I, I normally fight the monsters, but the puzzles are like this, um, have this Monument Valley aspect to it, so she absolutely loves those. But it's still a work in progress. We're still at the stage where she's sitting on my lap playing with it. Okay, and so jumping forward now to present day, this is six years old. Uh, she's now in full-time education. She can read, she can write, she can do some um, maths. She's basically this like proper little person who could probably start working and paying, paying some money back into the household. <laughs> uh, but she doesn't yet. And it's time we talked about the big, creative, expressive kids game, Elephant in the Room. And she did see me play Minecraft. Um, and she came in the room and she saw it. And there was this amazing moment where her eyes, with like almost all the games I've introduced her to, she's like, oh, this is interesting, but you know, you have to sell it to me. With Minecraft, it took a fraction of a second and I could see in her eyes that she was like, I understand this at a fundamental level that you never will. And it, <laughs> Get out of the way, old man. This is mine. <laughs> and so we went into the, um, we went, I was playing on the PC, so we went into the living room, we got the Xbox out. We started playing it on the Xbox, and it's a first first person game, so she was really struggling with controls for a while. She could move around, but the idea of tilting the camera was something really alien to her. That took a few years for her, like a year, 18 months for her to really get good at. But nowadays, she can sit side by side with me, split screen, and she can be doing stuff in the world uh, with full autonomy. And we started, we started playing survival, because that's what I play. So we were playing survival, and she enjoys it, but then also she finds nighttime relatively stressful. Uh, it's quite hard to actually die in Minecraft unless you're really stupid. So we weren't in the situation where she was encountering these feral states all the time. But the idea of forward planning, of not getting too hungry, of not walking too far from your base was relatively stressful. Even though nighttime, she used to enjoy sitting in the base, looking out the window at the monsters and laughing at them. And she thought it was hilarious that they couldn't get into her. But as soon as she discovered creative mode, it was like, okay, that's it. I'm done with survival. Creative mode is where I live now. And she was so good at um, so good at conceptualizing stuff to build. We ended up building lots of houses. Uh, the house we have at the moment is a two-story thing with glass ceilings between floors, so you can see up. And it has a water slide and a roller coaster on the roof, because of course it does. And she makes these things, she, well, I, I have to help make, she's not quite at the stage yet where she can autonomously like, imagine something and then create it from whole cloth. We have to work together to build this. But that's good, I like doing that, that's fine. And once we have this space, she kind of makes this play space and then she's like, okay, we're playing mummies and daddies in this now. And it's amazing how she kind of constructed this thing to then role play within. Uh, and then the other day we were playing it and I was lying in bed I was supposed to be in bed because I was supposed to be the boy and she would come in and she would throw stuff at me and say, you're late, get up. <laughs> uh, this isn't, this, she's not getting that from anywhere, by the way. Uh, and then once I got out of bed, she um, destroyed my door and placed it with blocks and then ran downstairs and then destroyed the ceiling block that I was standing on so I fell through on the floor. She just thought well, that was absolutely hilarious. Just such humour and uh, just a wonderful... A child, when a child is like got the giggles, is the best thing in the world. And Minecraft really gives her the giggles quite a lot. So that's where we are now. That's where we are in terms of games playing. I hope she's going to continue. Are we going to end up like this with me and old man and her playing games? I hope so. I love the idea of us playing Animal Crossing over the internet when she's 35 and living with her family. 
uh, but we'll see if that happens. Uh, I'm almost done, but before I finish, I, uh, this whole thing has been photos of me and Rosie. I have to pay tribute to the, who, this woman, who's Gemma, who's my partner, and Rosie, and indeed I would not be half the people we are if it wasn't for her love and her affection and the sacrifices that she's made. So uh, that's it. I'm sorry for stopping. <laughs> Thank you very much.